Pisama Koe, the Remix Play. Welcome to Remix Play. Selamat datang ke Remix Play. Welcome to the Remix Play 4. Huan Ying Lai Remix Play. Welcome to Remix Play. Welcome to Remix Play 4. Selamat datang dengan kai Remix Play. Jo kita Remix Play. Hi, my name is Alex Masters and I'm a designer, technologist and practice-based researcher based at Coventry University in the UK. I'm part of the Game Changers and Creative Culture team and I shall be co-chair in the discussion session with Professor Sylvester Arno. My area of focus is that of frugal education, which in a nutshell is about harnessing the power of design thinking, leveraging available resources and embracing sustainability to develop creative, practical and sustainable education for all. So I'm excited to discuss this with you in the discussion session and to get your thoughts on these ideas and how they apply to playful education practice and the things that you're delivering in your various institutions, schools and communities. Hello everyone, my name is Sylvester Arnab and I am a professor in game science at Coventry University. And my research is very much around investigating into um, the application and the design of playful and gameful experiences for education. So I am very excited to chair um, the Remix Play 4 live event on um, the 30th of June with the theme of Playful Education for Change. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and having discussions on the inspirations that we can actually have from playful and gameful activities and how we can create new experiences that can impact education. So see you there. Let's talk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, selamat siang. A very good day everyone. I'm thrilled to be part of Remix Play Summit this year. My name is Fitri Suraya Muhammad. I'm an academic staff at University of Malaysia Sarawak. I'm part of the Udimas Gamification Centre, the first in the country which focuses on R&D in gamification. I'm chairing the Asia-Pacific session today, happening at 11 a.m. Malaysia time. We have gathered educators from all levels of learning, from Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, and Japan. I look forward to the conversations we will have during Remix Play and the connections that we will make after the summit. Thank you for making time to be with us and stay safe, stay strong, and let's together explore play as a tool for creativity, happiness, and brilliance. Thank you. Hello, I'm Carlo Tramontano and today I'm going to chair the session for the Americas along with uh, Gilson and Luca. I work as an assistant professor at the Center for Global Learning at Coventry University in the UK, uh, where I mostly conduct research on an ethical and aggressive behavior in educational and organizational setting. I'm really excited about today and I really hope this will be a great opportunity to start building up a network and ideally share um, suggestion, idea and opportunities for future collaboration. Have fun and enjoy your session. Hello everyone, I'm Luca Morini, originally from Italy, but now working in slightly less sunny Coventry. I'm a researcher at uh, Coventry University's Center for Global Learning, and my work is focused on global citizenship 
and intercultural engagement. And what better way of getting together and meeting across cultures than playing and creating games together? So this is a big part of my work. I, I worked around co-creating games here in England, in Northern Europe, and uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, particularly in Malaysia. And uh, I hope that's, that this meeting allows us to come together, create a big network, and create together even more playing games in the future. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our session. Welcome to Remix Play number four. My name is Gilson Schwartz. I'm a professor at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, at the Department of Film, Radio and TV, School of Communications and Arts. I hope you'll enjoy our session and hopefully we will play together Purposium, Challengers of Justice. That's the special experience I want to share with you. So I hereby declare the works to be open. Anyhow, um, all remix play, I would like to um, welcome everyone. Um, and I would like to um, inform you that everyone coming to our session today will receive a digital badge in recognition of your participation in our event. Uh, These digital badges, you will be able to download it. Um, it's at the uh, Game Changers UK website. Um, it's ready for you, so you can use it anytime. Um, it's it's uh, particularly useful for your social media profiles, yeah? So um, quickly, the agenda for the one hour session, we only have one hour and uh, we're now in the uh, 10th minute already. Um, we will introduce uh, the, um, what Remix Play is all about and uh, what we intend to do with you today. Uh, the interactivity will be based on um, uh, a few things. We are going to run a Remix Play flashcard um, game with you and also a discussion on Miro. And uh, we will share um, what we have found uh, preliminary towards um, this event. As you know, um, we are running uh, three slots yeah, of this um, sessions, which means that you can actually join our uh, friends uh, at four, no, sorry, 7 p.m. tonight, uh, Malaysia time for the uh, UK, Europe, Africa um, session. And also there's going to be another one at 11 p.m. Uh, Malaysia time. Uh, to join the uh, the ones in Americas, which is the North, Central, and South America. So um, before I proceed, um, I would like to introduce um, a few of our contributors who, have, who are here today with us. Uh, Dr. Mohibuddin Fadli, Dr. Nguyen T. Tom Tom, Mr. Chua Kiman, uh, Mr. Go Kok Ming, Dr. Shaila T, Ms. Jane Ho Leiling, Mr. Nashnik Shah Majiri, and uh, Fatin, Fatin Izati Jaidil, Ms. Fatin, Fatin Izati Jaidil. Yeah? There's one person um, who also contributed um, the videos, one of the videos, which is Chegu Felicia, Ms. Felicia May Dizer. She's not able to come with us uh, and, and be with us today. Um, her internet connection where she is um, doesn't allow us to, um, to, to link with her today. Um, so yeah, the Remix Play Summit, it's an annual event. Yeah, we uh, bring together practitioners, researchers, um, designers of playful learning. Uh, we come together, contributing different aspects of uh, play and how uh, play can achieve serious purposes. Yeah? So we have explored um, play in general in Remix Play 1, playful co-creativity in Remix Play 2, and playful inspirations for social innovation in Remix Play 3. 
unfortunately we were not able to run uh, remix play last year because of the pandemic so this is um, our answer to that remix play for so this is our first attempt um, doing an, an unwebinar format and uh, we have been collecting practice examples from various countries and we showcase them as part of the living remix play video collection and uh, the theme this year, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's about playful education for change. And these, uh, the, as, as uh, you know, the three um, live uh, one hour sessions that you can um, join throughout the day. We are working on four fundamental drivers, which is uh, playfulness, inclusive and equitable education social change and community orientation. So we hope that through the interactions that we will have today, we'll be able to highlight some of the things that uh, we've been doing around these four common strands. And uh, we would like to invite you to come and um, work with us yeah, um, on various research capacities and um, to achieve long-term sustainable societal change and development in different national and cultural settings. So our aim for Remix 4 is essentially to create and launch a community of practice. And we hope that you'll be part of it, yeah, to develop and to showcase inspirations through video content. And we are very much interested to um, have you come and join us. So um, we have, as, uh, if you have gone through the um, Remix Play uh, website on Game Changes, yeah, on Game Changes UK, uh, you may have seen the 17 examples um, of case studies that we have collected from 11 countries around the world. So they have been highlighting the four strands that I've been um, uh, mentioning earlier, which is playfulness, inclusive and equitable education, and social change and community orientation. So if you have not um, spent the time to take a look at them, maybe you can after this, but uh, we have actually uh, compiled uh, the, a snapshot of the 17 videos. So um, we're going to play it now uh, to get you to have a look at what we've been up to. creating this uh, wonderful small space we call it dream space to increase you have fun in the, our learning to create a fun learning environment we we actually started to role play okay BTT is a fun brain exercise game to help my special needs students in areas like thinking memory spatial relation attention and imagination which will enhance their learning functions on the whole. RBT abarca lo que es la definición por el código niño niño adolescente vigente en Bolivia, los distintos tipos, los efectos que trae consigo y como plus los 10 derechos fundamentales de los niños por kin. Se necesitan otro tipo de abordajes para tratar la problemática y RBT es una de ellas. Mantiene la esencia del juego pero también se aprende. Muchas gracias. Uh, uh, since March 2020 until now, a whole year, I can see a really strong interest in adopting playful learning and gamification approaches. We prepared a digital playground. The digital playground accommodated all of the games we have designed. The contents of the games revolve around SK Simpox math and science teachers' input. Dan mainkan gamenya dengan menyentuh buah anggur sesuai dengan arah panah yang diinginkan. Ini bukan. Di sini anak-anak akan menyatukan potongan-potongan yang sesuai menggunakan pengetahuan dan juga kekreatifan mereka. Eu gostei bastante do jogo, né? Eu aprendi a a trabalhar em equipe porque no jogo a gente fez eh uma equipe de três e aí a gente trabalhou em equipe lá e isso eu gostei bastante. A gente resolveu, a gente conseguiu resolver os, 
os problemas que tinha para resolver. Eu gostei bastante porque teve bastante comunicação entre os entre os, os amigos, né? Um, in terms of the activity development as well, uh, behind us here is a guess who activity. So you can see there are a number of characters, all with different um, makeup and attire and eye color and, and things like this that we can then use as a pair work activity to practice items of clothing or eyes, body, body parts, you know, all of these kinds of things. So the, the server really lends itself to this playful um, game-based um, learning approach, really. It was to play Concordia, most importantly, to play and have fun. So the purpose of the clubs that we ran doing Concordia was that the children that participated had fun. Because at the end of the day, children are children. They need to play. They need to do something. Kids are always curious. And kids also, we know children learn by doing. We want education accessible for everyone. Imagine you're looking out of your window. It doesn't matter what country you're in. France, Ukraine, the United States of America. I'm sure you can see and find many problems. That, that's the easy part. Finding these solutions, that's the hard part. And that's why we all joined this EdTech Masters, so that we can find these problems. We have 28 different countries represented in about 50 different students. And the main problem, the main contextual challenges that we face are we lack of uh, digital learning opportunities. But for me, I do believe that everyone deserves their own learning opportunity and digitals can empower them to learn more and to have a deep learning about their world and to expand their horizons. Such as for internet connection, uh, not all students effort to buy electronic devices to learn, and different students have different learning abilities. No one wants to be left behind. So this issue of lack of access and facilities have also resonated more so during this pandemic. So even though we cannot go online 100%, there are activities that we let them do as long as the learning still go on at home. But when we're doing things online, I'm not sure whether I'm talking to the kids or I'm talking to the parents because who's holding the phone? <laughs> so I have to be careful with the language I use, the tone I have, to then ensure that I'm actually talking politely, differently. Because when you talk to adults to teach, it's a different um, tone, different way of speaking, especially when you talk to kids. You have to bring in a different language so that they can understand you. In Bolivia, Todavía existe una gran cantidad de niños, especialmente niñas, que abandonan sus estudios por no poder trasladarse desde sus hogares ubicados en las pequeñas comunidades rurales hasta los colegios secundarios ubicados en las poblaciones mayores. No, o, o propose. Ha hecho que, que es, es una mano, una mano virtual, es un abrazo virtual, ¿no? Que usted consigue hacer con los alumnos. So Coventry Crosshairs work hard to create a safe environment for young people from diverse backgrounds. We can expand and create further opportunities for young people to participate and expand the horizon. And the question I like to ask is how can we be symbiable? Symbi symbiable being a, a portmanteau word that brings them together the two concepts of symbiosis and viability. So in other words, how can we work in a way where we're, uh, we're working in symbiosis with the environment and with each other and we also can be viable in such a way that we can live together on this planet for a very long time? There's been some long-standing issues in our education surrounding the inclusion of pro-social themes and ethical content into the curriculum there. Fragments of Him as a game, as a story that it creates, directly addresses themes of sexuality, coming out, grief, and to some extent also generational differences in the perception of um, our rights as individuals. We needed an example, um, and I needed an example, particularly in my teaching, to stimulate discussion, including representation of women and minorities in games. The new context of education and all the um, 21st century learning and new expectations that are coming about because of changes in society 
um, changes in sustainability, changes in how the world is operating, changes, digital changes, um, look means we've got new expectations about ability to communicate, ability to work in teams, adaptability to change. All of these things are going to be so important for children in the future. In terms of the impact of the server, uh, I know multiple people that have gone on to pass the Japanese language proficiency test uh, after doing activities here and becoming motivated to learn Japanese to a higher level. And I've also had, conversely, I've had English learners, I've had Japanese students of mine um, come onto the server as Japanese teachers, but then become very proficient in English at the same time. Pertama di waktu pandemi kami harus berimprovisasi dengan kondisi di mana uh, di lapangan kita di Indonesia tidak diperbolehkan untuk bertatap muka. Di situ kami juga melihat bahwa antusiasme peserta dan bagaimana uh, apa ya tingkat interaksi mereka cukup tinggi. Utamanya di waktu pandemi ini mereka masih tetap semangat belajar, masih tetap semangat dalam mencari ilmu dan berbagi kebaikan. Jogo também amei porque é, nos faz enxergar que a gente jovem agora a gente pode mudar o mundo. Bastante da experiência e uma coisa que eu espero é que a resolução que a gente tenha dado né, dos problemas sejam levados em consideração. Talvez alguém algum dia Veja o vídeo e, e goste de uma ideia que a gente deu e realmente faça. Ou até mesmo a gente que participou do jogo. Bom, é isso aí. É como se o desenvolvimento, é, esse jogo e esse tipo de pedagogia, né? Ele pudesse favorecer o desenvolvimento da virtude. Virtude é uma coisa que é, a gente não, não aprende na escola. Então, é, é um conjunto, e, e eu acho que, como você fala na virtude, a gente está aprendendo a ser, né? A gente está também é, aprendendo não só matemática, português, e toda a geografia, história e tal, mas a gente está aprendendo a ser. So, through the experiences, young people will obtain new skills and develop the skills they already have. Gamers are able to transfer the pro-social skills that they learn from multiplayer gameplay to peer and family relations as well as improving social and emotional skills. We kind of uh, help each other to, to see what can be done, for example, in remote schools or in uh, rural areas, a teacher may need to use a different approach uh, instead of depending on the online tools. We need women. Now, what am I saying? We don't need women. These are not women. These are superheroes. So we have corporate superheroes, school superheroes, university superheroes, community superheroes, and NGO superheroes. And those are our partners and our mentors and the people who will us help us enact learning as we go through the challenges. So what we do is we reinvite people inside the university system and we plant the challenges as seeds, and then we let the superheroes mingle with the students, bring them back inside, see what can happen. I try to invite experts from the outside to introduce robotics and coding programs to our kids. This is here, actually we have connected to ASEAN community. Dan Rocky Fay bergerak dalam pendampingan riset pelatihan dan workshop utamanya di komunitas-komunitas kami mengajak komunitas di Solo mengajar untuk ikut bersama kami ikut mengeluarkan workshop mereka berpartisipasi dan uh... we are a growing international community of more than 80 students all around the world thanks to this community we are able to make different initiatives initiative in different local scales, such as a maker space in a secondary schools or an application on the web to help the students to practice exams. Sin embargo, los niños y jóvenes de las casas de saber, por estar expuestos a una formación incompleta, impartida con metodologías ajenas a su realidad, 
por lo general son poco receptivos a una educación tradicional y por lo mismo las clases en aula, las charlas, los dictados, etc. les resultan muy poco motivantes. Conscientes de ello, hemos promovido una práctica educativa alternativa fundamentada en procedimientos lúdicos. El trabajo educativo amparado en el juego nos ha demostrado que es la mejor forma de trabajo con los niños rurales. Los motiva mucho, los divierte, les permite aprender en un contexto diferente al convencional y lo más importante, lo hacen en interacción armónica con otros niños y jóvenes aprendiendo unos de otros. So it started as an English language learning server, but I invited a number of redditors, people that use Reddit, to come and help my students learn uh, English. And once the course finished, my Japanese students kind of left the server and I was left with um, a population of students that wanted to learn Japanese. So we flipped this, the concept of the, the server on its head from an English learning server to a Japanese learning server. And since then, I've had many wonderful builders come on here and create these buildings as a kind of immersive environment for learning Japanese. And, um, we think that we can help change something in the community and to work with the more teachers and more students in the rural areas, especially the teachers of the disadvantaged areas. There is still room for progress for both me as an educator and also the community, the students. So creativity has no limit. It can go both ways, offline and offline. All right, there you go. That was the 17 videos that we um, have featured on the Game Changers UK website. So um, if you're interested, we need you and those that you know uh, who are impacting their, their own communities yeah, by means of playful and creative education. And uh, we would like to showcase as many inspirations as possible. We have created a landing page um, for all of the videos that uh, we have collected. And if you are submitting yours, uh, we will create one for you as well. Um, if you take a look at the slides right now, I think there's a QR code um, that you can use. Um, scan this through and uh, you will be able to see um, a link that will bring you to the uh, page for you to um, include your expression of interest here. Yeah? So it will contain um, contributions as well as call for anyone who would like to partner with us um, to run any uh, specific um, activities from um, send, sending bits out, um, research, or even collaborative classrooms. Yeah. Um, I want to share with you a word cloud that we have um, gathered from registrations that um, we have collected yeah, for all three slots, all three sessions. And um, the most prominent words, as you can see here, are um, games and education. And uh, this particularly are the main concerns anyhow about what we do in playful education. We would like to use um, uh, playful, um, the playful approach to engage uh, communities. And um, we hope that through, by doing that, uh, we are making learning better, we're making education better, and we explore ideas to make it uh, meaningful uh, through experimentations of different approaches. So um, the next word cloud that I'm, I'm showing you here is um, the ones we particularly collected for uh, the Asia Pacific um, region. So as you can see, the words are a little bit different because um, I think our main concerns are mainly on community and uh, playfulness, yeah? So these words resonate um, the collective need in many parts of our countries here in Southeast Asia. The pandemic has forced us um, to reflect and rethink the way that we are teaching and learning. And um, we know that change is eminently has has um, has got to happen, you know, at, at some point at the community scale, and uh, this is to ensure um, sustenance and impact. So um, I would like to invite you uh, 
um, to, to take a minute to write what comes to your mind when you think about changes in education. Can you use the um, text box right now? And then um, let's see what you're thinking. What changes are you thinking about in education? So we will co collect all of your words. And we will put it in the um, another word cloud, yeah. And we'll show it to you at the end of the session. So um, play is a wonderful tool for learning design, yeah. And we know this from the broad interest that you have um, shown us um, in the registrations, particularly. Uh, now we, it's time to be a little bit creative. Let's try to exercise our creative muscles. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yes, uh, so here are the Remix Play flashcards. And uh, we would like for you to um, use these cards. And um, I'm going to walk you through it. It's, it's quite easy, actually. The, um, the idea is that we have uh, one topic card and one game card. The topic card will tell us um, the kind of scope that we would like to address. And uh, the game card will be what kind of games that we would like to um, work on. The so that means we need to know the game mechanics, yeah? So if you look at the one on the screen right now, social responsibilities, um, it could be something about, um, say, the food banks, yeah? Because right now, during the pandemic, in, in Malaysia particularly, it's, it's, it's quite popular right now to set up food banks. And um, say if you want to get a group of people to come together and think about um, what are the ways as to, uh, what are the creative ways as to how to um, set up uh, food banks in, within their communities. So if we use the Pictionary um, game, and we know that the Pictionary is about um, drawing, yeah? So you're not supposed to say the word, but you're supposed to draw. So um, how we mesh this together is that we could probably ask people to draw um, items for a food bank, depending on the types of categories of needs. Like for instance, um, single mothers would need what? Um, what kind of things would they draw? And then, um, 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 uh, say uh, the B40, what we call B40 in Malaysia is, is uh, those who are earning less than um, 1,200 uh, Malaysian ringgit a month. So um, what are the things that they would need? Yeah. So um, if we mesh this together, how would the cards, uh, sorry, well, how would the game um, come about? So um, I want to get you to try. Um, this is the next, can, can we have the next slide, please? Okay. So this is your challenge. I want you to think of one mathematics topic and how you would teach that mathematics topic using Lego. All right, so we're gonna give you one minute. So you, have, you really have to cram this. Yeah, um, and we're gonna do a countdown. And uh, when you're ready, um, please uh, write out the game in the chat box. Yeah, and anyone who contributes will get a physical copy of the set. Yeah, we're going to post it to you. Uh, one of my team members are going to contact you after the session and we're going to send you the physical copy of this uh, play card. So uh, I hope you will um, join in. Okay, so think about it. You may begin now. You have one minute.
that's brilliant. We have a few very interesting games here. Um, Dr. Jane Labadin, I saw you um, write a game out here. Can you um, turn on your microphone, please? Uh, do you mind sharing your idea? Hi. Hi, Hi Ray. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I was thinking about volume. Um, you know, sometimes uh, small kids couldn't like know how volume looks like. So one piece, one piece of a Lego can we can calculate the volume, and hence when they create, you know, one piece on one one another, they can create uh, a shape, and then from that shape they can uh, calculate the volume as well. You know, right. based on summing it up. <laughs> Yeah. So basically using the um, the blocks to create the physical, the visual representation of the yes. volume. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Natasha. Natasha Rusty. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. Silicon, can you share the um, the game that you're thinking about? Oh, um, a very spontaneous idea, but I was thinking that we can divide the students into different groups and each group will have different amounts of Legos and different colors. So the class will have one big project where they have to solve. For example, maybe build a red house and a green house and the roof can be blue. So they will have to learn how to work with each other and then use the different amounts and they have to count something like that, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha. No problem, thank you. So all of you who have contributed here, you're going to get one set of the physical copy yeah, of the uh, play cards. Uh, so don't leave yet. Uh, please leave your, um, your information with our uh, team. So um, I'm going to give you another chance to get um, the physical cards. So yeah, so this is your next challenge. Climate change and Jenga. One minute from now. ideas here um let's see let's let's pick someone here um okay let me let me call uh dr fadli then dr fadli do you want to explain your game hello assalamualaikum okay yeah. um, <laughs> okay uh let me talk about this game this is quite simple game that you know that that earthquake is a daily <laughs> daily common you know uh like uh Bencana alam in in my country in Indonesia actually. So this this game is quite simple. That we try to easily move the jenga, and then uh, the students can see that. And when when we move, the jenga will you know, will will shake and broke into a piece. And and this is uh can ensure and make the student awareness about the earthquake, and they can run to to outside, and then they can keep safe in very clear area maybe <laughs> yeah that's excellent yeah uh, if we can put all the elements that yes. we have to think about yeah in in the jenga block yep. yes um excellent uh, can i have another one thank you dr fadli um, no worries sharon? sharon are you there sharon chan yes i'm here morning yeah, yeah silicon can you share what you have oh uh, at first i was having uh, the thought that each Jenga piece is an element in the environment, like uh, what if uh, one Jenga piece is about trees, the other one is about water. So what if a sudden changes if pulling out those Jenga out from the Jenga block, then would it be easier for those 
that whole Jenga building to be crumbled much more easier or what not. Uh, that's what I had in the initial thinking. Uh, that's brilliant. I think that can be developed into a full game. Um, yeah, different types of um, even water, different types of earth probably, isn't it? So um, how do people actually uh, make decisions about which ones would, would um, be structurally stronger than, than the other? Um, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. So those of you who have contributed here, we are going to be in touch with you. Please don't run away all right after the session. One of our team members will be collecting your postal addresses, yeah? So um, while we go on to the um, next, um, next session, uh, this is the discussion forum that we would like to um, invite you to go to. Uh, we have set up a Miro board uh, because we think um, Miro helps us. It's an online whiteboard. Um, it helps us see what everybody's thinking. So um, there is a link that you will have to um, go to. You can scan the QR code or you can go to this link on your browser. It's bit.ly bit slash remix play Miro. If you're not able to um, access this, it's fine. I will share the screen anyhow, yeah? So this is how Miro looks like. There's a few things that you need to be familiar with. These are the control panel. Yeah, um, these are templates. You can choose different templates to use. Um, however, however, you don't need to use that today. Um, that's a text tool. Um, that's a sticky note tool. This is the one that we would like you to try um, to use today. Yeah, the sticky note tool. And um, there's shapes. You can create different types of shapes on the board. Uh, it's bit.ly bit uh, slash remix play Miro, M-I-R-O, one word. I see people coming in already. Uh, you might have to sign in a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe two seconds to sign in. Um, and you can comment, yeah? And this tool is um, for you to uh, create the, hang on just a minute. Yeah, and this one is for you to share. This one is for you to create the, um, the boxes in which you want um, things to appear. So we've actually created this. And the question that we have for you is this one. If you are not able to um, link to Miro, you can type it into the chat box here. Yeah? So we're going to do a SWOT analysis a little bit. Um, I want you to think about um, how do we make connections between what is taught in STEM? Because we noticed that a lot of uh, participants were talking about their concerns about, of, of STEM, yeah? STEM in school, how STEM is being uh, delivered in school. So how do we make connections between what is taught in STEM and what the local community actually needs? So, and, and I want you to think about how playful approach, playful education approach would help um, in doing so. So um, as the SWOT board um, looks like, there's the first one is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges, yeah? So um, we have populated a little bit <laughs> the board just to help you to get along. Uh, so some of the strengths, um, I think Chua Kiman has started to contribute here. Thanks, Kiman. Um, like these things, yeah? So what, what would you like to add on to this?
going back to the question again. How do we make connections between what is taught in STEM and what the local community needs?
Yeah, the support boxes somehow is missing now. Uh, Nashnik, can you bring in the SWOT uh, boxes again? I can try. Okay. Strength creativity, yeah. Okay, I think we have to um, quickly sum this up because uh, we're almost um, out of time. This is brilliant, guys. This is brilliant. Now, um, you can use Miro for your, for your own um, classes and everything. Uh, we use this quite a lot um, because it, it does replace the functions of a blackboard. Now, um, as you can see here, yeah, the strengths that we have identified are um, very, um, oh, this one is a weakness, so this one has to move. Um, the strength that we have identified <laughs> is um, quite diverse, yeah? Um, if um, there is no need for um, internet connection, perhaps it will be easier um, to run the um, activities, yeah? Um, teacher creativeness is a huge um, element in making sure that um, playfulness or playful approach can be um, disseminated. Um, local knowledge to relate to the games, I think this is very important as well. Um, these are some of the things that we are also working on uh, research-wise um, to understand how we can um, utilize uh, local knowledge, local games, um, and also to, um, to include that in the way that we um, uh, present yeah, the um, more serious um, subjects like STEM. Yeah? Um, and we are all talking about the different um, cultural um, values, cultural needs, how do we put them together? Yeah, these are all the strengths that we, we all have yeah, in different um, cultural contexts that we belong to. Now, let's look at the weaknesses for a bit. Yeah. Some of the uh, points that you have raised, which is the lacking of creativity, sometimes this also becomes a hindrance in the way that we uh, plan and design uh, materials and lessons for, for students. Um, STEM is based on logic. So how do you make it um, fun? How do you make it less serious? How do you make it um, meaningful? So these are um, some of the issues that we can actually expand and, and, and work on, yeah? Most of the time is dry delivery, yeah, of, of the STEM um, materials. And, and if we are working in remote areas, you know, there are things that um, may not uh, be integrated into the way that STEM is being presented in school. Uh, we have seen this as well in our own research, and and um, I think there's a lot of area that uh, a lot of areas that need to be um, worked on. Um, challenges. These are some of the challenges that you've listed: teacher readiness, lack of lab facilities. Yeah, these are all about facilities. Lack of hands-on during the pandemic. Yeah, um, governance. How um, schools or even institutional um, agencies are being um, administered. Yeah, sometimes uh, people do more for profit rather than non-profit. 
Yeah, so if it's not something that brings money um, to the agency, it, it's not going to be prioritized. Yeah, and um, lack of time, lack of time. This we hear from a lot of teachers, particularly in Malaysia, when we go around um, uh, presenting, uh, you know, uh, uh, showing them how to use gamification elements. A lot of them would say, you know, it's a, it takes a lot of time to prepare um, materials which um, include uh, gamification um, integration. So, um, and the last bit here, the last box here, which is opportunities. And uh, you mentioned um, the community hall. Yeah, there are things in the community that can be used. How to make STEM relevant to the immediate environment. The STEM interests will create more uh, a, a, a more creative community. So these are the things that um, could be inculcated, yeah. And and if the community's um, relationship with um, schools or institutional um, uh, agencies, um, this can actually be capitalized, yeah, in the way that we make uh, or we use a playful approach uh, for change. So the next bit is actually I wanted to bring you here. This is the next uh, box. I think some of you may have um, seen it. It's just right next to what you uh, posted up just now, which is a risk matrix. Yeah, this is a risk matrix box. And I wanted you to um, go through um, the points that you have created in the, um, in the sticky notes. Yeah, and uh, to put it here, then we, um, we will discuss like how, what, which are the ones that can be addressed uh, immediately and would have the most impact. So um, if we had another chance to, to talk about this, I think it will be a really good conversation across um, different countries and across different cultures. So um, I have to stop now though, um, because we need to get on with uh, the final bit. So I think this is a good um, platform um, so far in the way that uh, we are starting to talk about things that are familiar to us and things that we are concerned with. And um, if we can bring forward this conversation, I hope that you will um, show um, uh, your support by uh, putting in your expression of interest so that we can continue this conversation. We will create more platforms for us to collaborate. Um, this is the best, I guess, um, way right now uh, to connect with people from, from different geographical locations and time zones. And um, I think this is the, a good first step. So I would like to encourage you to um, to, to go to the Game Changes um, website, Game Changes UK, and then uh, to put in your expression of interest. So that's um, that's the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the sort of last message that I have um, from this. I, I wish we had more time though. Um, and um, yeah, the, the last bit is that uh, I want to leave you with this um, quote when people align around shared political, social, economic, environmental issues, or sorry, values, and take collective action, thinking and behavior that compromises the lives of millions of people around the world can truly change. So we believe that um, if we work together and form this um, community of practice um, in playful education for change, um, we will be able to make um, a lot of difference in, in different speeds, perhaps in different ways, different strategies. But I think it's nice to um, be able to connect with like-minded people who, who also worry about the same things that we are worried about. Um, that marks really the end of um, the Asia Pacific session for Remix Play 4. Um, I thank you for your participation and uh, for all the contribution that you have um, you know, provided for us in this one hour. Uh, please access the videos um, in the Game Changes UK um, website. Uh, if you can participate in the conversations and the discourse and uh, remember to um, submit your expression of interest yeah, in the Game Changes UK website. So, terima kasih. Yeah, uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, a very good day. Have a, have a great day ahead and uh, stay safe everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vitri. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Mr. Chani, and thank you, the team.